Um, I want to thank IIT and IDC for this invitation. I want to thank uh, Ravi, Professor Puvaya, uh, for inviting me to come here, and especially that I know went into this, creating this conference. Uh, it's wonderful to see all of the students here. And um, <clears throat> you've done me a great honor by inviting me here. You've also done me a great favor uh, by removing me from the insanity of the American presidential campaign. So I'm uh, thankful <coughs> for you uh, for that. Um, Having begun my career as a letterpress printer and paper maker, my thoughts about design are still grounded in craft. I'm also a teacher of typography and book design. And for the last 10 years or so, I've been investigating how design thinking occurs and how to teach it as a process. There have been two parallel paths in this work that have begun to overlap and inform each other in ways I hadn't predicted until recently. One path has to do with craft and the design thinking that is inherent to the practice of the artisan. Coming to India the first time was revelatory for me because of the abundance of artisans who continue to produce so many everyday objects. And I've returned yearly to continue that investigation. The other path, the one I will speak about today, has to do with our physical and cognitive visual processes, how the eye receives and the brain perceives. In other words, how vision is created in the brain. For the last several years, I have been developing a curriculum and visual recognition for the design student structured around two fundamental questions. First, how does the way we see shape the way we design? And second, is there a relationship between visual complexity or ambiguity on the one hand and its salience, our ability to remember it, on the other? In other words, is there a difference between this and this? This entire line of research occurred almost by accident. Several years ago, I was notified by my dean that I had volunteered, unbeknownst to me, to attend the kickoff lunch meeting for the new Center for Aging at Washington University. I had had no previous experience with aging other than actively doing it myself nor did I have any clue as to why I was asked to attend this meeting. I just figured I would go, fulfill my obligation, have a good lunch, and that would be the end of it. But once inside that meeting, I was impressed by the range of creativity focused on this massive demographic shift toward a rapidly aging society. I realize that this is distinctly a, a problem in America and the West. Uh, India has almost the exact opposite demographic at this point. Sitting next to me at that meeting, oops, sitting next to me at that meeting was a cognitive psychologist who was as surprised to meet a designer in that setting as I was to be there. He was eager to tell me about new research into typographic preferences of older adults for reading type on the screen. I was surprised to discover anyone was even doing that kind of work and eager to hear the findings. He cheerfully told me, Comic Sans. R older readers prefer Comic Sans overwhelmingly. What? Are you kidding me? Of course, I was horrified at the idea of a scientist telling people they had to design everything in Comic Sans because you know you tend to believe someone in a lab coat. I could see he was surprised by my reaction, so I asked him the questions that would occur to any typographer. What was the context for this test? How long were the line lengths? How big was the type? How much letting was there? What was the screen resolution? What was the background? And what were they reading? What